Just got a couple quick announcements. Welcome to our Vacation Bible School Sunday morning. Uh, before we go any further, Vacation Bible School is awesome. God really, really blessed it. Diana, come on up here. This is Diane, I call her Lady Di. She was the leader of the Vacation Bible School and her and her crew did an awesome job. So could we give them a standing ovation and all the glory to God? Thank you. That's all you. I don't need yours. You may be seated. Good morning, Hersher Christian Church. Morning, How is everyone? How are you doing okay. I am, thank good, you. Good. All right. Well, the first thing I have to do is some announcements. So let's get that out of the way first. Um, first of all, in regards to vacation Bible school decorations, we left them all up. What do you think? Yeah, I do have to say a huge thank you. I got a lot of the decorations from a Lutheran church in Naperville who had over 400 kids throughout their week. So they passed it along. They were blessed by a church. They passed it along and we're gonna do the same thing. So we are blessing a church in Orland and one in Arkansas who um, will be doing scuba VBS next year. So um, 
I will ask if you have a little bit of time after service to help me get all the coral things, like anything that's freestanding, like in the halls in particular, just we're gonna make a trail and go back to the old sanctuary where we're gonna set it all because I have to go through it all and figure out what's going to Orland and what's going to Arkansas. So I don't want anything thrown away. I don't want anything ruined. So you can leave all the stuff on, on the walls, that sort of thing. It's really about getting the stuff on the floor out of the way and off of here. So if anyone has time to do that right after service, I would appreciate a couple extra hands. No big deal if you can't. So that was number one. Number two is it looks like we are kicking off all of our groups, our body, our bodybuilding groups. So let me put on my glasses so I can read this. On September 9th, both groups for women. I hear something going on. Oh, it's Sam. I hear Sam. I'm like, why do I hear this voice in my head? I know it's not God at the moment. Maybe, maybe it was. Okay, it was Sam. Um, so both, both of the women's group, whether you go on Monday evening or Tuesday morning, we are going to meet on September 9th here at the church at 6 p.m. to have some faith, fellowship, fun, and food. So that will kick off the Women of Worth um, series. And then um, Men in the Mirror, they're gonna kick off as well. So on September 10th, we're gonna, they're gonna meet for devotional for, um, fellowship, fun, and food at 6 p.m. as well. Um, and you're gonna be doing life lessons from Philippines Guide to Joy by Max Licato, which it looks like it costs $6 for that book. All right, so then everything will resume on the 16th with our women's at, on Monday night or on the 17th with our ladies in the morning, if you meet in the morning. And then men's group on the 17th will kick off their normal weekly thing. Everything will be back in the swing of things because, you know, we're going back to school next week. Can you believe it? Can you believe it, kids? Teenagers, are you ready? No. They're like, man, can we do VBS again? Can we have one more week, right? Yeah, okay. All right, were those the main? I think those were the main. Oh, and I have a thank you note to read. Um, this is from Dan and Val Steidinger. Thank you for all the prayers. Um, thank you for the beautiful concrete angel and for all the texts, calls, visits, cards, and support from our loving church family. God blessings. So this was in regards to Dan's father passing away. So, all right. With that, the long awaited, we're gonna kick off our VBS program. So thanks, I see a lot of new faces out in the, in the sanctuary. So thanks for joining us this morning. If I can get, Cameron's already sitting up here. Stay there. I need Addison. I need the other Addison and, the, and Aubrey and Cammy. Guys, just come this way, come closer, sit on the front row. Cammy, come over here. Cameron, come over here. I need, yep, and I'm gonna call you guys up one at a time after I kind of start. So, welcome to our VBS program. We did scuba VBS this week, as you can tell. It was a deep sea adventure. We dove into our friendship with God, and these kids had a lot of fun. They did get wet. They got a little cold when they came back into the church, but that's okay, we had towels for them. Um, they seemed to really enjoy everything that we did. Um, they managed to run around. They got to see some exper experiments within our imagination station and then in our fantastic finale. So it was a great time and I think they all enjoyed it. We, my, I gave these kids some goals throughout the week. One was, a boy versus girls. The boys were really outnumbered, not gonna lie. We had like three boys total, I think. Very, very outnumbered, but it's always about our missions. So we always collect money throughout the week of Vacation Bible School um, to send to our missions. And so the, the kids always show up. The second night, this little boy brought this big bag of pennies, which I know Holly and Dan really enjoyed counting. It was great. Um, but it doesn't matter, right? It was all about the fact that he wanted to give those pennies. And so we always have a boys and a girls, and I always pick two individuals to kind of go head to head. Um, and this year I decided to really pick on teenagers. I, ha I have my own teenagers, so I felt like I could do it. Um, Trevor Ball, who's not feeling well today, so please pray for him, or he would have been here, was a huge help. He did skits with me 
um, each day. I know he helped Sam out in Bible Adventures. I had him playing not only Sydney Shores during our skits, but he also played Jonah at one point in the finale and Jesus. I'm like, you have a lot to put on your resume. So, um, but I asked him to represent the boys and then I called on my eldest daughter who is actually down at the State Fair helping Mike and Kelly with Mia Bellas at the moment, so she's not here. But I put them up against each other. So Devin was, was the representative of the girls and it's all about trying to get the kids motivated, right? Boys against girls. And at the end of the week, whichever one collected the most money, the other one was gonna get a bucket of water on their head. Miraculously, I'm not really sure how it happened, but they were tied. So both Devin and Trevor got it. Yep, that's how we do vacation Bible school here. Um, and then the other goal that I gave them was having um, 30 different kids being here this week. And let me tell you, they came out in droves. They did a great job and they only missed it by one kid. Um, and so if they got 30 kids here throughout the week, then I was gonna get a bucket of water on my head. Now I've done a lot of things over my years of vacation Bible school, which has included being turned into a Sunday with a bunch of sprinkles up my nose, which was great. Um, I have had whipped cream in my face multiple times with pies. I've been dunked. Um, and I have eaten a cricket. Yes, I have. It was supposed to be sour cream and onion flavored, and I didn't get the one I was supposed to, and I thought I was really smart by just swallowing it and not chewing it. Word to the wise, if you ever have to eat a cricket, please chew it because it gets stuck. Okay, anyway, but it's all for the kids, right? So this year I was like, I really, really, really do not want whipped cream in my face again because it kind of burns, not gonna lie, a little bit. So. Um, we went with a bucket of water since we were doing scuba diving all week and it's all about water and deep sea adventure. So my only ask of the ladies in our snack area was that they did not put ice in the bucket, which they didn't, so thank you. Um, so because they were so close, I went ahead and took one for the team and let them put a bucket of water over me, um, which I thoroughly enjoyed. Thank you so much, Cameron. Because throughout the week, they get points for being here. So being here, dressing in our theme, right? We do crazy hair day, we do team color day, we brought our favorite hats and our favorite stuffed animals this week. We've done a lot of stuff over the weeks um, and over the years. So if they bring friends with them, if they learn the Bible point, if they learn the Bible verse, all those things they get points for. And at the end of the day, the kids that have the most points are the ones that get to do that to us. So Cameron got to do it. I know we had Aubrey getting to do stuff. We had a lot of kids. Addison got to do stuff as well. Um, so it was a lot of fun and I know they enjoyed it, right? Okay, so now I'm gonna call on these kids to help me out. So Cameron, come on up here, stand at the microphone. We're gonna teach you what we learned throughout the week. And I need my other helper, which is my other daughter, Miley. She drew the short straw, sorry. Okay. All right, Cameron, on day one, we met Tad. Tad was a frogfish, right? This is our, we have Bible buddies each week or each day. This is Tad, my friend Tad. He's a frogfish. And what did Tad teach us? What Bible point did he teach us? God is. Oh, are you on? Can we hear her? God is a friend who's real. Thanks, Thanks God. God. So after our Bible point, every time we say it, we have to do thanks God. So I've told you once, I expect to see it every time now, okay? All right, okay. Now, Cameron, um, can you tell everyone what our Bible story was about? The Bible story. God shows himself to Elijah through ups and downs. Awesome. And last, what, I'm waiting for my Vanna over here. What is our Bible verse for day one? We believe and we know you are the Holy One of God, John 6, 69. Awesome. High five, Cameron. Way to go first. All right, who's my day two girl? Addison Menard, come join us. It's like the price is right. Okay, on day two, who do we meet? She's over here. Finley, our dolphin. Right here was our Bible buddy on day two. And what did Finley teach us? What's our Bible point? God is a friend who loves. Thanks, God. Make sure we can hear you. Get into that microphone there. I know you can do that. All right, and go ahead and share our Bible story for the day. 
God shows compassion to the people of Nineveh. God so showed compassion to the people of Nineveh. All right. And lastly, what was our Bible verse? Just as I love you, you should love each other. John 13, 34. Awesome. High five me. Thank you. Aubrey, I think you're next, right? Day three. On day three, we met our seal right here, Mr. Fisher. And he had a nice accent. I feel like it was from Australia. I don't know. But you know, if you ever meet a seal that has an Australian accent, it's probably Fisher. Okay. So, Aubrey, on day three, what did Fisher teach us for a Bible point? God is a friend we can trust. Thanks, Thanks God. God. You're taller than everybody else. Get into that microphone. Okay. And what was our Bible story for the day? Jesus calms a storm. Mark 4, 35, 41. Okay. And then what was our Bible verse for the day? I'm leaving you with a gift, peace of mind and heart, John 14, 27. Awesome. Nice job, Aubrey. Okay. Addison, my other Addison. We had a couple Avas, a couple Addisons, but I'm keeping them straight. All right. On day four. We met Waylon. Before I say what this is, does anybody know what kind of fish this is? Not the teenagers, you were here. Not the kids, I'm looking at adults. Anybody know what this is? It's a whale shark. Thank you. You get an A for today. All right, so that is Waylon. He was our whale shark, and Waylon taught us what for our Bible point? God is a friend, oh. God is a friend forever. Thanks, God. Thanks, thanks, God. Yep. And then what was our Bible story that day? Jesus dies and comes back to life. John chapter 18, 20. Okay. John, or Jesus died and came back to life. And then please share our Bible verse for the day. I am the resurrection and the life. Anyone who believes in me will live even after dying. John 1125. Nice job, Addison. All right. And last but not least, Miss Cammie, come on up here. On day five, we met Octavia. Isn't that special? She's an octopus. Octavia the octopus. I think she was one of my favorites. I like the I like the scuba mask on her head. I thought that was appropriate. Not that she would need it underwater, but I think she was being sympathetic to us, you know, humans that would need one. So, so on day five, Octavia taught us what Bible point? God is a friend for everyone. Thanks, Thanks God. God. Okay. And what was our Bible story that day? Lydia believes in Jesus, Acts 16, 11 to 15. Okay. And lastly, what was our last Bible verse for the week? For this is how God loved the world. He gave his one and only son so Everyone who believes in him will not perish, but have an eternal life. John 3, 16. Awesome. Thanks so much, Cammie. Go have a seat. All right. Let me tell you, these kids caught on so quickly. I didn't even really tell them what to do. I just showed them the thanks God. And every time, even when I was doing a brand new Bible point for the day and they had no idea what it was going to be, they figured it out right away. They're super smart. And they did the thanks, God, every time I needed them to. Yep, Cameron, super smart. Super smart. Okay, I got one more thing to share with you. We're going to do our theme song, and I need all of my VBS kids to come up here. I need those teenagers that helped throughout the week. You're up. Get up here. Come on. Come on. You're all here. So if you helped from a teenager perspective, if you were a kid in vacation Bible school, let me make sure I got all my kids up here that were here. All right, now here's the deal. Slide down this way, guys. Slide, 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 slide. You can go around. Teenagers, you can stand behind them. That's okay. All right, now, here's the deal. Y'all have done this with a video behind you or in front of you the whole time. Guess what? You're not going to get to see the video. It's easy. It's the Thanks God song. You guys can do it. 
You didn't pay attention. Well, I'm sorry. All right, let's do this, guys. I really put them on the spot there. They had no idea they weren't going to have a video in front of them. So you guys did a great job. All right. <clears throat> and to close things out in regards to Vacation Bible School, I just want to say a huge thank you. Um, it was an amazing week at VBS. Um, I'm always so frazzled when I go to do it each year. Never think we're going to be able to pull it off. Never think that the halls are going to look cool enough. Um, there's always something that's getting in the way, right? The devil just wants to get at you no matter what. And let me tell you, he comes at me every year. But the blessings that I saw all week, we talked about God sightings all week. And God sightings are just noticing things around you that God has created. Um, a lot of times the kids were like, I got to spend time with my grandparents or I got to do something with my friends. Um, but let me tell you, one of the best God sightings we had was Friday night. Um, Cameron brought a couple friends with her, and we had another little girl, um, and they all three accepted Christ on Friday night, because that's what Vacation Bible School is all about. So at the end of the day, for me, it doesn't matter how many kids we get in this church. It's about the kids that come in that want to learn, that want to know more, and that want to have a relationship with Christ. And so for me... The fact that that happened, and thank you, Kathy O. Um, she had sticky scriptures. It was a new thing this, this year where they learned their Bible verses, but she gave them each a chance to learn more about God and to accept him um, into their hearts. And I'm just so grateful that that happened um, and that we were able to open up our church doors to allow these kids to come in. So um, at the end of the day, I couldn't have pulled this off without all of you guys whether you prayed for us, whether you were here helping, but in particular, those of you that helped. So everyone that helped in any way for Vacation Bible School this week, could you please stand? Kids, stand up. That's you too. Goodness gracious. And there are some that are not here. So I just want to say from me to you, thank you. Thank you. All right, with that, we're gonna go back to worship. Thank you.
child of God. Amen. If you're happy to be a child of God, give the Lord a hand. You may be seated. It is so good to be in God's house. And at this time in the service, we do something very special that we call around here communion. So if you have your communion juice and your cracker, you can go ahead and open that up. And as you're opening it up, I just want to share a couple of thoughts with you. You know what you used to see advertised a lot in restaurants and groceries? You remember the buy one, get one free? Does anybody remember seeing that a lot? Yeah, you don't see that anymore. There's not much of anything out there for free. But I want you to understand this, that salvation, salvation is the free gift. The salvation didn't even cost us a dollar. But I want you to understand who it cost. And that's what we think about when we take communion. Our salvation cost God his one and only son. Will you bow your head just a second and think about that? Your free salvation cost God his one and only son. Romans puts it this way. Romans 5.8 says this, But God showed his great love for us by sending Christ to die for us while we were still sinners. <clears throat> At our worst, he sent his son to die for us. And since we have been made right in God's sight by the blood of Christ, he will certainly save us from God's condemnation. Romans 8, 1 says, There is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Take your cracker. And it's way more than a cracker. It cost God his one and only son. It's the broken body taking eat. Reflect. Free salvation, but it cost God his son. The juice, way more than juice. It was the blood of our Christ. Shed for our sins. Take and drink. Father God... Thank you for loving us beyond words. You are an awesome God. And when we take this communion on Sunday morning to remember through the week, help us not forget. In Jesus' name, amen. Now we do something else special around here. This is called tithes and offerings. And this is an opportunity for you to give back. And all that you give goes to spreading the kingdom and keeping this church up and going. Will you pray with me? Father God, I just want to say thanks, God, that we get to give back. And all God's people said, Amen. ushers, come forward, please. Father God, again, we just thank you. It's a joy to be here. In Jesus' name, amen. Ushers. Now you can go to Children's Church. Have a great time. We got a bunch of kids this morning.
Well, welcome again. My name is Pastor Sam. We're glad you're here. If you're a visitor, make sure you fill out a little connect card there in the back, and we even give you some more popcorn to take home with you, so you'll be full of popcorn. But we're glad you're here. We're going to pray and ask a blessing on the service, and I'm just going to share a few Vacation Bible School thoughts, and you can go home. Father God, thank you for allowing us to be here. It's been exciting. The energy these kids bring is just awesome. Give it to us. Give it to us. I want to be that excited. Lord, I know everybody here wants to be that excited. Let us tap into that childlike faith again and just love you with all our hearts. That it moves us to smile and be full of joy. and Show this whole world that, God, you are alive and well. We just love you and praise you. In Jesus' name, amen. I'm going to ask you to do something that probably drives you crazy, but I'm going to ask you to do it anyway. Will you please stand up? I hit a button, your vacation Bible school age, just real quick, okay? And I want to repeat what Diana did because I like it and I'm the pastor, so we get to repeat it. All right, day one, God is a friend who's real. Thanks, God. That's the part I really like. Day two, God is a friend who loves. Thanks, God. Day three, God is a friend we can trust. Day four, God is a friend forever. Day five, God is a friend for everyone. And one more, what a friend we have in Jesus. Thanks, God. You may be seated. Being a VBS Sunday, we still stayed in our sermon series called Unforgettable. We're calling today Training Day, since Vacation Bible School is about training the little ones to love the Lord. Proverbs 22.6 from the New Living Translation says this, Direct your children onto the right path, and when they are older, they will not leave it. Now Solomon, the wisest man in the Bible, wrote that. The wisest man that ever walked the face of the earth wrote that. And basically he was saying this, Direct your children in such a way that when they grow up, they won't move out and stop living for Christ. Now, that doesn't mean that they won't struggle because they will. That doesn't mean that they won't have hard times, but they will. But they won't give up. See, being a Christian, you all, there is no give up in us. There is no give up in us. 1 Corinthians 15, 58 says this, Stand firm. Let nothing move you. You hearing that? Always give yourself fully to the work of the Lord because you know the work of the Lord is not done in vain. Vacation Bible school was a blast. We got to to see kids pray and and sing and, and quote scripture. And you know what else? We got to see adults pray and sing and quote scripture. When Solomon says direct your children, he doesn't mean just tell your children, but he also means we show our children. We show each other how to live for Christ. My nephew Bubba, his real name's Jalen. Of course, I had a nickname for him. Bubba, I think when he was born, he weighed 14 pounds and they all walked home. Now, he wasn't that big, but he, he, he earned the name Bubba. <laughs> well, Bubba liked to play basketball. And Bubba had the, had the best, best, best mom. She was such a good mom, good heart, great mom to him and his sister. But anyway, Bubba liked basketball, and she put him in a program. You've probably heard of it, Upward Basketball. It's a Christian basketball program. And he was so excited about being in it. We had a basketball go out to the farm, and he was out shooting one day, but this is what he'd do, okay? And for those of you who don't know much basketball, I'll explain it to you. He'd dribble, pick it up, run to the basket, and shoot it. Well, you can't do that. That's called travel. you got to dribble, 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 and then when you pick it up, you either pass it or shoot it. So I watched Bubba do this a few times. And I said, hey, Bubba, you're, you're, not, you're not doing it right. And I'll never forget what he said. His eyes got great big, got a big smile on his face. He looked at me and he said, Uncle Sam? I said, yeah, Bubba. He said, will you show me? Will you you show me? And I said, well, I'd be glad to show you, Bubba. See, we just don't tell these kids. We just don't tell each other. We live in such a way that they know Christ is real. They know life change is real. Yeah, I tell you what, um, day two. Day two of Vacation Bible School, and I've been going to Vacation Bible School and doing Vacation Bible School for years and years and years. But day two changed me forever. No, I'm serious. Day two changed me forever. 
Day two, this was the poster. And the scripture right here. And I, well, I'd read it and the kids would read it back to me real loud. But here's what got me. It says, God shows compassion to the people of Nineveh. And I stopped the lesson and I asked the kids, I said, what's compassion mean? Their eyes got big, you know, and they always leaned in when they answered. And they said, that means to be kind. And I said, you're right. And they said, that means to be nice. And I said, you're right. So then I said, so Christian people are supposed to be kind and supposed to be nice. And they leaned in and they said, yeah. And I said, the church, when people go to church, the church is supposed to be a place that's kind and nice. And they said, yeah. And then my heart leapt. You know why? Because they really believed it. They absolutely believed it with all their hearts. So when they run into somebody that calls himself a Christian, they're expecting what? Kind and nice. When they get older and start coming to church and find a church and bringing friends and family, what are they expecting? Kind and nice. The church is supposed to be kind and nice. Christian people are supposed to be kind and nice. Hers are Christian church. Don't make me a liar. Those little kids believed it. They believed it with all their heart. I can't speak for the other churches. And I can't speak for the other pastors. But by the grace of God, can our church be kind and nice? Can we be kind and nice people? Yeah, direct your kid in the way she's going. It doesn't mean just tell. It means, it means show. But that, 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 that changed me forever. John 13, 34, this is the third week we've had this scripture. God's laid it on my heart. Went right with Bible school. I didn't even know it was in the Bible school curriculum until I was at Bible school. Here we go. John 13, 34. And grade yourself, okay? I'm going to grade myself. You grade yourself. John 13, 34. Love each other just as I have loved you. You should love each other. Love each other just as I have loved you. You should love each other. How are you doing with that? That's so big, isn't it? It is so big for us to love God and love each other. Amen? Okay. Good experience, bad experience. Good experience, bad experience. Good experience. Last Sunday, me and my bodyguard playboy, Pete, he's not feeling good. He's not here. And uh, Grandma Cheryl and, uh, and Ace and Holly... We went to Daniel's, Bubba D's daddy's visitation. Wow, was that man loved. I mean, that man was loved. We got there, and I mean, there were people everywhere. I think everybody in the whole little town was there. We got there, and we go in, and you have to go downstairs. So Playboy Pete waited upstairs and got a seat. We all went downstairs. The rows were like three, three, three deep. I thought, I mean, I feel like I'm in the line of King's Island for the roller coaster. There was that many people there. It was... What a life he lived. But anyway, we're standing there, you know, and we're talking. And i got to be honest, I was very underdressed. Imagine that. I had on what I had wore to church, and most of the men in there had a suit and tie on. And everybody was friendly. It was a great experience. But anyway, I'm standing there, you know, talking and stuff. And this gentleman walks up to me. Kind, face kind, tone kind. But he said, who are you? And I said, excuse me? He said, are you Pastor Sam? And I thought, uh-oh. Okay, I said, uh, yeah, I'm Pastor Sam. He said, come with me. Oh, I didn't go anywhere. I just stood there. I was nice and respectful, but I said, uh, where are you taking me? And everybody started laughing. He said, no, come on, I'm going to take you upstairs, and you and Peter are going to the front of the line. So it was a great experience, but I thought maybe he was going to ask me to leave. I thought maybe he was going to come up and say, hey, come with me. You're underdressed. You need to leave. Now, why would I think such a thing? Well, it happened to me in South Carolina. Years and years ago, yeah, my family were on a beach vacation. We found a church to go to. We, well, we thought we were going to. And we got there, and, and my clothes were nice and clean. They were just summer clothes, you know. And we get there, and these two men, they were, they were big. I mean, those two elders of that church, they were big old men. They were dressed in suit and tie, and fine. So I walk up, and I get a bulletin, you know. My family goes ahead, and the guy steps in front of me. And he said, hey, uh, you're not going in there without a tie and a jacket. I thought he was completely kidding, you know, you know me. I said, well, it probably wouldn't go with my shoes. And I started laughing. And I started going, he slid in front of me. This time he got up in my, in my, yeah. I stepped back and he said, you're not going in there 
without a jacket and tie on. I said, okay, that's cool. I guess I'm not going in there. I said to my crew, hey, let's go. So we left. And you know what? It didn't scar me for life or it didn't turn me off on the church. But what if that had been my first time? Somebody had begged me and begged me to come to church. And when you get there, you're going to find compassion. And you're going to find kindness. And you're going to find nice. And they wouldn't even let me in the door because I wouldn't wear a tie. I am so glad that you guys love the way you love. God is an awesome God. So when Solomon says, direct your children, he's talking about teaching them. But don't you think he's really the, the big push is to show them? Amen. To show them. Good, good experience, bad experience. We want Hersher Christian Church not to be just a good experience. We want it to be a life-changing experience because we want people to come here and find Jesus. And he becomes their Lord and their Savior for real. 1 Peter 1.22 1 Peter 1.22 says this. You were cleansed from your sins when you obeyed the truth. So now you must show. There's that word again. Not just You must show sincere love to each other as brothers and sisters. People should see the love of the Lord with their very eyes when they hang around with us. Can I get an amen? 1 Peter 4, 8, 9 says this. Finally, all of you should be of one mind. Let's grade ourselves on this one too. 1 Peter 4, 8, 9. See how you're, be honest, how you're doing. All of you should be of one mind. Sympathize with each other. Love each other as brothers and sisters. Be tender-hearted and keep a humble attitude. How are we doing with that for real? Don't repay evil for evil. Don't retaliate with insults when people insult you. Instead, pay them back with a blessing. That is what God called you to do, and he will bless you for it. Can I get an amen? Direct them in the way they should go, but just don't tell them, but really, really show them. Actions speak louder than... 2 Corinthians 5.20, one of my favorite scriptures. It says, we are Christ's ambassadors. Let's stop right there. Do you understand what that means? Do you understand as a Christian the responsibility that each and every one of you have? Oh, yeah, we have it as a church, but you have it as an individual too. Christ's ambassadors. The way we live, we are supposed to represent Christ. Can I get an amen? And be honest. How are you doing when you leave here? How you doing with at work? How you doing with your family? How you doing when you're out and about? Remember, you're representing who? Oh, come on. You're representing who? And actions speak louder than we are Christ's ambassadors, his representative. Listen to this. God is making his appeal through you. God is making his appeal through you. This is the prayer for my life, Okay. John 3.30, he must become greater, I must become less. I am an ambassador. I get it now for real by grace. I am a representative. I get it. When you're around me, all I want to be is the dot. I know you can barely see it, and that's the way I like it. I just want to be the dot. When you're around me, did you hear me? I just want to be the dot. I want the rest to be all about Jesus. When you hang out with me by grace, I want you to experience Christ's integrity. Christ is love. Christ is honor. Christ is strength. Yeah, I, I just want to be this little God. I want everybody to see Jesus in me. Amen? Listen, maybe you need to go home. Get a piece of paper and make you a dot. Because this is great news. God wants you to be a dot too. Dot, 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 dot. So when people are around us, all they see, all they see is Jesus. They don't have to wonder anymore. Is this Christianity true? Is this power of God true? Can God really change lives? Well, you bet he can. Just show up at Herschel Christian Church because by God's grace, it's real over there. Titus, I'm just going to go through it real quick and get you home here. Titus 2, 1 through 8 says this. This is Paul writing to Titus. Titus is getting ready to pastor a church. And you know we're all, 
We're all pastors and teachers in one form or another. But real quick, he says, promote right teaching. As for you, Titus, promote the kind of living that reflects wholesome teaching. You may be a great Sunday school teacher, women's teacher, men's teacher, spirit lifters teacher, lead a home Bible study. You may be an excellent teacher, but it's way more important to practice what you preach, to live out what you preach and teach. That's what brings God honor and it lets people know that, hey, this is for real, you know, that Jesus isn't make-believe or fantasy. As for you, Titus, promote this kind of of living that reflects wholesome teaching. Teach the older men to exercise self-control, to be worthy of respect. Let's grade ourselves, men. And to live wisely. They must have sound faith and be filled with love and patience. When he says older man, he's not talking about age there. He's talking about spiritual maturity. You may be 30 years old and have the spiritual maturity of 80 years old, but you may be 80 years old and have the spiritual maturity as a five-year-old. But you can't grow till you're honest. So let's be honest where we're at, men. How our walk with the Lord really is. Yeah. Teach the older men to exercise self-control, to be worthy of respect and to live wisely. They must have sound faith and be filled with love and patience. Similar, teach the older women. Now time out, women. The Bible said older. I didn't stick that in there. So nobody try to kill me after church, okay? And when he says older, he's not talking about age for y'all either. He's talking about spiritual maturity. Again, you may be 30 years old and have the spiritual maturity of an 80-year-old or be 80-year-old and have the spiritual maturity of a 5-year-old. But you've got to be honest before you grow. Similarly, teach the older women to live in a way that honors God. They must not slander others or be heavy drinkers. Instead, they should, reach, they should teach others what is good. Let me say that again. They should teach others what is good. These older women must train the younger women to love their husbands and their children, to live wisely and be pure, to work in their homes, to do good, and to be submissive to their husbands. Boy, there's a whole lot of show in there, isn't it? Yeah, it's just not telling, but it's showing. Then they will not bring shame on the word of God. In the same way, encourage the young men to live wisely. And you yourself be an example to them by doing good works of every kind. Here we go. Let everything you do reflect the integrity and seriousness of your teaching. Teach the truth so that your teaching can't be criticized. Then those who oppose will be ashamed and have nothing bad to say about us. Now, you know how that works. Let me explain the ending there that Titus. They can't say anything bad about you. Why? Because you're just not teaching it, but you're living it. You hear me? You're just not teaching it, but you're living it. In closing, I want to read Galatians 2.20. New Living Translation says this. My old self has been crucified with Christ. Let's grade ourselves. It is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. I'm going to read that one again, okay? That's for all of us. My old self has been crucified with Christ, or has it? It is no longer I who live, okay, but Christ lives in me. So I live in this earthly body by trusting in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. What's that look like? That's the dot, isn't it? But I want to close with this thought. And I say this very lovingly. I can preach and other preachers can preach and you can go to Bible study for years and years and years and, and, and be taught. But I'll tell you what, you're never going to get blatant sin out of your life until you self-diagnose. Because a lot of times a preacher can preach and you can let it go one in and out the other because you don't want to hear it. You're, you don't want to be convicted. You don't want to be changed. You take your mind and you go somewhere else. Preacher after preacher after preacher, Bible study after Bible. What's the old saying? They can talk to the blue in the face. But when it gets real is when we get honest and you self-diagnose. And you say, you, you accept that conviction from God and you say, okay, I hear it, but I just don't hear it this time. I'm going to walk away from whatever you want me to walk away from and I'm going to walk into whatever you want me to walk into and I know what that is. That is for me to live my life like your son Jesus Christ. Yeah. You know what kind of church we are? 
We're a show me church. We're, 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 we're a show me church. And I'm not saying that because the preacher uses toys and visuals every Sunday. We're a show me church because by God's grace, you're living it. You've self-diagnosed. You've asked for forgiveness. You've repented, which means turns around. And you ask God for the strength every day to be the real deal. That's us, right? Come on now. That's us. But before I pray, I want to leave you just reintroduce one more thought. Dot, 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 dot. I don't want them to leave and talk about me. I don't want the accolades. I don't want the glory. I don't deserve it. I'm not the one that went to the cross. Yeah. Can it really be about him? Can it be about him? Can we live change? Can we live true? When people come, can we have compassion? Can we be kind? Can we be nice? Yeah. We're not going to be liars, are we? Dot, 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 dot. Dot, 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 dot. He must become greater. I must become less. We're here because it's all about him. Father God, it is all about you. Everything that is done in this church is all about you. And Father God, please forgive us when we get sideways. Forgive us when that self slips in. Forgive us when we want the accolades or we want the glory or it's our way or the highway. Uh-uh, uh-uh, uh-uh. Keep that out of there. We want to stay dot, 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 dot. We want to live like your son. We don't want to be a liar to these little kids we taught this week because they believed it, God. Wow, 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 did they believe it. May we direct them. Tell them and show them. Tell them and show them, God. By God's grace, if it's your will, bring more folks here. We're going to tell them and show them. And it's going to be all for your glory. And all God's people said, amen. Will you stand with me? Do we have a song? Okay. Whatever the Lord's laid on your heart, let God be God. Can I have some leaders up here?
seated. Before I give the, the closing prayer and send you out, first of all, I just want to welcome all the visitors again and make sure you get a connection card and fill it out and come back and see us. We don't have popcorn every Sunday, but we still have donuts, so you can come back. Real quick PS on the sermon and then we can and then we can go. Have you ever watched a movie and you absolutely hated it when it was over? It was that good a movie. And you're just like, I'm going to keep watching it and watching it and watching it, but it's over. Well, you come to a worship service, and you get to sing to the Lord and take communion and give back, and you get to listen to God's word, you know. And it's like, yeah, I don't want it to be over. I just don't want it to be over. Well, it's not over. And what I mean is, worship is a lifestyle. You take it with you right out that door so people can tell that Jesus Christ is alive and well. Worship is never ending. Amen? Amen. Father God, thank you that we get to be the family of God. And Lord, um, correct us and scold us when we're not compassionate and kind and nice like your son. Wow, what a privilege, what a shock we got to get to be the church in here and out there. And all God's people said, amen. You're dismissed. Thank you for being here. 